ball game. Um, I tip my hat to them. Like I knew that coming in, they're top to bottom. They've done a very nice job with the roster. The, the transfer arms are in play, clearly. Um, their management of their secondary pitches was, was great. We never really had the answer to adjust and decipher the secondary pitches, and they, they did a great job. Like I, I thought their lineup, top to bottom, physical, competitive, balanced. They're a really good team, and we clearly were not equipped. You know, personnel-wise, we're clearly not 100%, um, but you still have to go play clean baseball. Our pitch execution, uh, you know, Chuck, that the bullpen Carson threw in the middle of the week was the best one he's ever seen. So, you know, you have expectations that we had made some progress, and uh, clearly it, it wasn't as good in the game as it had been in his, in his training, which is unfortunate because of, of any day, today was a day we needed some, some real length and a good durable start, um, and we didn't get it. So tough. Like the guys are clearly frustrated. I'm, I'm frustrated with that. You, I don't know how many of the runs were actually earned runs, but when you make those kind of defensive mistakes uh, all over the place and, and uh, the freebies on the mound and some of the wild pitches, it just it, it becomes insurmountable unless your offense is so dynamic and so on it that you can overcome some of the miscues, and clearly that was not the case, and they, they just out, they outplayed us. They did a really nice job. Is it compounding a little bit to the plate, even just kind of the frustration? Well, yeah, yes, I, th I think it is in, in some cases. You, just, you can't get off the field. Like, we're not able, and that's been a concern of mine since I, I've told you guys day one, is the efficiency defensively and on the mound, that sometimes the momentum starts there, and you bring that into the dugout, and we're not creating that. And when you do go through some of the innings, whether it's an individual that then has to go to the plate, it's tough to shake some of the, I think, quirky mistakes that you saw today, like at third, and then you know the, the ball in right field at Jaime still, the, the jumps and the reads to close and finish some of those. Um, I think sometimes you do bring it in as much as you don't want to. Um, so yeah, I think that could have factored in. But again, their management of the pitching staff and their use of the secondary pitches and some of those, those guys that they were able to add to their staff um, I mean, it's a, it's also in play is how well they pitched it. I play like where it seems like there's a question on whether or not the ball goes off to a batter's foot. Is that reviewable? Or? Once he calls it foul, it's not. The play's over. He called the play dead. So there was no – the play's over. So he couldn't really do anything with reviewing that. It is reviewable, but, you know, he said, Coach, I saw it hit him, and once once I call it foul ball, like I can't – turn it into an unfoul ball. So that's where we were with that one. It seemed like uh, a game where there was just like a lot of kind of bang bang plays that maybe it didn't go or decisions that didn't go your guys way. Was that what led to the frustration? Well, when I talked to the team, it, it did feel that we were battling the whole time. And the pitch execution gives you a lot. When you're stringing quality pitches together, that's the foundation of pitching and I don't think we're stringing enough together as a group there were some good pitches that were thrown army probably sequenced you guys from your angle and watching the game can probably see it better than I like from the side it's hard to tell in out you can tell up down but if you sequence you might have more things pan out in your favor if you're sequencing and throwing the ball exactly where it's asked to be thrown for the catcher setup and I don't think as a whole again you guys would probably have a better angle and look than I do right now, I think that that does factor in. And I thought they probably managed the execution on the mound a little bit better, and that's their advantage. Yeah. Coach, where do some of those answers come from, coming from within or, you know, for the ones that the guys are seeking to be able to get off the field to manage some of those defensive efficiencies? Do they come from within or, or just kind of working through it like that? Well, you know, some of them are – some guys that are playing positions that they haven't had a ton of activity at. Um, you know, Nander went over there, Cam, the last thing we thought was going to happen was that Cam wasn't playing at all this weekend, and that's what happened. So you're asking somebody that we felt like had a shot, and there's other people that have trained over there a little bit, but we thought that gave Kamaka a good opportunity to get in there, and he's earned it. So I think there's some of it. Um, 
you know, the concentration level on some of those off script. There's some plays that come up that are a little sometimes unusual, and we haven't handled those particularly well. And I think some of it is just maybe being in spots that are new. And I know Jaime's still learning how to play right field. He played it last year, but it wasn't like he's played the outfield for the last five, six years of his life. So um, I think part of it is that. And then the concentration, like being able to focus and maintain, you know, quality play throughout the course of something that's off script is you know, that's something that you have to you have to do whether you played that position a lot or, or not. You coach a lot of baseball and, and you played a lot of baseball when when teams are going through stretches like this like what's the key to kind of getting out of it? Well the last couple of days it's it's the ability to refresh and come out and play a good energetic game but you have to let the frustration of it fuel you a little bit so that you're not repeating mistakes and that you do have some intensity within what you're trying to do, whether it's better intensity at the plate with the, just the quality of the, the intent on the fastball and hopefully the recognition of the secondary pitch. So I want them to use how they feel and you know how I feel. They need to be learning and try to put some of it away, but let the frustration help you become a little bit more focused and intense on, on what you're trying to do. Now, the balancing act of that is is tricky um, because you don't want them to lose the confidence in what they're doing. But it is using some of the negative moments that you have to try to help that, like, push you along to, to come out hungry and, and have the right intensity, like, at the plate. And even on the mound, to drive pitches and force these things exactly where you're trying to throw them with the caliber of stuff that you know is your A stuff. With Monty, do you feel like the command inconsistencies or something mechanical or, or something mental that he's just trying to work through? Brett, I think it's probably a little bit of a combination. Like today, the, the grip of the ball was dry, windy, cool, and he didn't feel like he had quite the same feel on the baseball. So I, I don't know how to chalk that up really in terms of which it is. But, you know, to see Chuck that excited after his bullpen, I was excited. Um, and you know you're hoping that trends itself right on to really coming out of the gate and getting us a good, good, deep, like legitimate, good start. And um, it didn't. So you, you don't want it to be a work in progress for him. But in essence, that's that's still what it what it is. And he had the good sinker today. Like there was some bad contact on the ground early in the game, which was good. The ball was it was actually down. Like there were moments in some of his other outings where I felt like even though the velocity was maybe a little bit better, it was just up and the guys were able to barrel it where early in the start, like some of those fastballs were down. He did throw some good cutters to the lefties, but I mean, we're, we're grasping a little bit to say that that's you know, more good than negative in his start, especially after how well he, he trained this week to get himself like in, in position to have a deep, legitimate good start. Let's go two more. Looking ahead a little bit, you guys got Florida Tuesday. Um, you know, what do you guys need to do? Get ready in two days to play a game. And also, the, when asked about that, um, you know, the new SEC rule, is that something with the 10-run rule? Is that something you agree to beforehand, or is that kind of um Well, you know, first of all, the, the Tuesday game, like, it's just playing good, clean, sound baseball. Like, that's what we all want. It's not as much who. I know that's a, that's a big game. Like, I, I get it. But it's how, like how are we playing and what are we doing in the course of these competitions that either gives you a chance to feel like this thing could go your way or the things today that you did that clearly make it so difficult to overcome to mount an opportunity offensively to, to win a game like that. So it's, it's how we are doing, it's not really who. Like I'm not worried about who, whether it's the Yankees or whether it's the local Ten-year-old, like we have to go play the game better, and we have to, you know, you know maybe practicing the days off and how we use them. And we played at 11 a.m., so the good thing is this is over with. So maybe we use tomorrow as a day to to try to get out there and get some guys more suited in the positions they're playing right now. Um, your second one. The um, new SEC rule is that something you guys um, have you thought about that yet, or like you know, like if you could talk to coach beforehand. The or, ten run rule. Yeah, ten run rule. Yeah, you know, it's. It's a tricky thing to get used to. And they asked us as coaches if that was something we wanted to do league-wide. 
and we said no. Now you can still agree if I understand it correctly. You can agree, but it's an awkward. It's sometimes an awkward conversation to have because you, which side of that are you looking at? Right. <laughs> sometimes, yeah, you would like to end the game, but then there's other times. I think we came back from nine against that team a couple of years ago in one of the craziest games I've ever seen, and you're you're so close to that game being over. And when do you want to risk? I, statistically, I don't know the, the comebacks that have occurred in this thing from down 10, but sometimes it's a difficult decision and conversation to have when you're not quite sure. So I think the SEC got to the point where the league, for the time of the game, to condense it so things didn't get – so you don't have – they had a couple scores last year that, that got like crazy, crazy, and I think everybody felt, let's just force it. Um, but we did not go that route as coaches, like – league-wide in, in every game. How did the DMS, DMS come out of the game and just get closer to being able to play the game? Uh, the throwing is clearly the last thing. And this morning, like, we're here at 8 o'clock trying to get ready for this 11 a.m. game. And it was – he was fine with the BP, and then we wanted to let him hit a few balls off the machine. So the, the impact of a ball that's going, you know, 90 miles an hour is different than a ball that's going 50. So we wanted to make sure he – he had that chance to feel it out. And uh, you could tell, like, the moment that guy's in there, first of all, it's a left-handed bat, which we desperately need. And um, he's got a good presence about him, and he likes to play. You can tell. You can tell. And I think to say that he was 100% today, is, there's no way. There's no way. But he's a great base runner, and he's going to grind out at bats for you, and he sprays the ball all over the field. So it's, a, it's just such a great dimension. And he's equally as adept in the outfield. So now you plug just a tremendous defender back in there. I don't know what the throwing. The throwing this week wasn't great. It's just the, the feel of that thing. And when you're hitting, that finger doesn't come into play on your top hand a whole heck of a lot at the end of your finger. But when you're throwing, that's, that's everything. So uh, I, I don't know where we are. We didn't even ask him to throw today. It was just a matter of can we get him through the stages to see if he could actually hit. And, and he, he could.